Hello and welcome. My name is Prue or Prue Larue, and today I'm getting my hair pulled back rather messily. My makeup done will be listed in the description below, and I'm coming to talk to you about something that might surprise you, might not, but I want to talk today about five ways to stop yourself before buying the makeup. <laughs> or for me it's eyeshadow palettes. This has come about for me because I'm just, I'm about to do a giant haul. Anyway, this video is going up and then my haul is going up. So I feel like I need to set a disclaimer. Just because I've bought the makeup doesn't mean you should buy the makeup and I want to talk about some things to think about before you buy makeup because it's so easy to go crazy and just buy so much stuff especially when you're someone who consumes a lot of makeup content I feel like I always have a bit of pressure that I want to buy the makeup for some reason or another so let's get into it and let's talk about my reasons today or my questions to ask yourself before you decide to pull the trigger and buy it so my first question that I always like to ask myself and that I think anyone should ask themselves is why do you want why do you want it what is it that's drawing you in is it an eyeshadow palette do you already own that color story because how many times can you buy the same brown neutral palette or how many times can you buy a rainbow palette what is it about that color story that you want so you're going to think about how the color story is going to add to your collection is it going to just be another repetitive item or is it going to stand out is it going to give you something new and different to work with hmm. and most importantly do you think the colors work for you so many times now we're getting the ColourPop monochrome palettes and they're so beautiful to look at but it's so easy to buy something and then you realize you hate the color on yourself one of my friends just bought the Sydney Grace Danny's Dream bundle but she doesn't really like wearing greens on herself so stuff like that it's so easy and I've done it a million times to buy stuff that just doesn't work for you because you want it and on that note it's also important to think about how how many looks have you seen done with the palette so is it someone that that is PR out for it and are they all doing the same sort of look I remember for me personally the Urban Decay was it naked yeah the Urban Decay naked heat palette I remember when this was released and watching all the reviews I couldn't stop watching first impression videos on this and review videos I didn't know that three palettes one look videos were a thing when I bought this or what it was but if I were to go back now and look at all these videos I'm pretty sure every looks gonna look the same I bought an 80 like, I'm pretty sure it was an 83 dollar palette and there's not much versatility in it oh my god I have cat hair on me and I know if I went back and looked at all those videos all the looks are gonna be the same Pay attention to what the people you're watching and the looks they're doing. Try and sort of analyze it and go, all right, I'm only seeing this one look. <laughs> what is the versatility in this palette? Whereas per se, if you look at the Anastasia Beverly Hills Alyssa Edwards palette, there's a lot of people being quite creative with it. Though to be honest, I'm seeing mostly the yellow and the purple shades being combined. So are those the only shades that you need from that palette that are giving you that bang? And what is the look that's drawing you in? Do you already own it? And most importantly, can you afford it? I am pretty adamantly against putting makeup on Afterpay, which is a system, I'm pretty sure it's in the US, but we definitely have it here. It's essentially like putting something on credit. And, I, and a lot of the times I think you're better off using a credit card if you're going to use Afterpay because most credit cards give you 55 days interest free. And I believe Afterpay is the same or even less amount of time to pay it back. So you don't need another company telling you to pay them back. And why why put makeup on Afterpay? I know one of my best friends, she loves Afterpay. So it definitely works for some people, but you have to be smart with it. Like, so can you actually afford it? And is it worth it for you to be paying a sort of, like an amount every fortnight for the, like, you know, the next three fortnights to pay it off? My question number two to ask yourself is, what do you want your collection to be? And this is something I'm still working on personally. For me, I kind of want an eyeshadow palette from every single brand. And I want to try all the brands. I just have a problem. But I've also got to curate that to within my expenses and to make it affordable for myself. So I have to be careful in choosing what I want. So I 
do need to get better at curating my collection but my collection I want to kind of just like own something from every brand but a lot of people want a minimalist effect and that's amazing to see and I love seeing what's in people's minimalist makeup collections because it's products they truly love and then you can also have it just curated to your own taste do you need to have a lot of choices probably not you probably have your favorite kind of looks and those can be covered in a few eyeshadow palettes you don't need the 60 that I own so really thinking about what your collection should be or what you want it to be number three and this is something I'm drawn into all the time but do you want it just because it's on sale so it's amazing when you see some of these amazing sales going on and you're like yes I've been dying to try this I want this for me what's been the worst with sales is when something goes on special that I don't really want but I kind of want but I know that it's really expensive I don't get it half price for me that happened a lot with Kat Von D products in Australia about three to four months after her releases things would go on sale so I'd get them for half price which is amazing for Kat Von D shadows but at the time at the time I was buying them I didn't know how to use colorful eyeshadow I was just like sick Kat Von D product half price fantastic I'm buying but I wasn't using it because I didn't know how or what I was just buying it randomly because it was on sale and that's such a bad way to look at things the only time I recommend buying something on sale is if it's something you've been eyeing off for a long period of time and suddenly it goes on sale and you're prepared for it. A lot of the time companies do repeat sales so you can keep an eye on them. Like we all know that Colourpop's going to do 30% off quite frequently. It's worth waiting out for them. Or their eyeshadow singles where they do the half price for a full palette of singles. Yeah, I would definitely recommend waiting to see the sales if you're not in a rush to buy it. And sometimes when you buy something on sale, you always think of it as being that price. So while, you know, when you bought it when it was $80, it's like a bit more special. Buying it for $40, it takes away that little special thing and you just treat it like a $40 product. So it's a hard thing. But I really just don't recommend jumping on the sales as someone who used to follow the sales a lot. That's how I ended up with a lot of things in my collection that I just don't really like or use. Number four, and I've definitely touched on this uh, in a bit of other stuff, but is what will it add to you every day? When you buy something makeup wise, you want it to be something that you're going to use regularly. You don't want to buy something that you're only going to use every once in a while or for a special occasion. If you want special occasion makeup, go get your makeup done at by a makeup artist and they probably have whatever products you want. <laughs> you're all good. One well, my personal favourites to go to a store and get it done where you're paying like $80 for your makeup done and you get it back on products on the day. And that's just a fun way to do it. Knowing what you're going to get out of this makeup. Makeup is so expensive. It's not something that we should just buy buying on the whim. We should be investing in it and thinking about how it's going to add to my everyday. And number five. This is one of the things I find the most interesting to just watch and see reactions online when people are buying something that's new release and it's how quickly do you need it I absolutely understand if you're a beauty channel and you are you want to receive it quickly so you can get it up on your channel and hopefully draw in some new views some new subscribers and that's completely understandable but you've also got to acknowledge if you're a small channel you probably work full-time are you gonna be can you estimate when you're gonna receive the palette are you gonna have enough time to film and edit that video I have done this so many times where I've bought something when it's come out and I've not had time to film with it. So it's about assessing your time versus how much how quickly you need it. And can you wait and watch and see the product come out and see the reception it receives? A lot of makeup, even if it is limited edition, does end up coming back. And if it doesn't come back, oh well, like let's just move on with our lives. There's something new on the horizon, I'm sure. And a lot of the time you will notice there's that initial hype of a product and look going back to the Urban Decay Naked Heat I don't remember if any of you remember when that was released. I feel like the hype was huge Like tremendous and I feel like everyone was talking about it and now I, I don't see anyone talk about it I don't see anyone's favorite videos. I don't see it anywhere So I mean it's probably because I mostly watch colorful channels now, but I still just don't see anyone really talking about it so really sitting on a product and letting that hype ride out and you know if you still love it it might be going on sale soon so pick it up then 
So anyway, these are the kind of questions that I've been asking myself before I'm buying makeup lately. And I just hope that it might be able to help you. I feel like the addiction to buying makeup can be really real sometimes. And I mean, I love buying makeup. It's my favorite thing to do. But it is important to recognize these things and to not just buy everything because you want it. And with makeup and the amount of releases coming out, I think pulling ourselves back can only be a good thing. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this sort of short, chatty, five things video. I could have returned to this old series of just talking about five things. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think of these five questions. Do you have some questions you ask yourself before you buy makeup? Is this helpful to you? Uh, thanks for watching. Mm-hmm.